Hello, and welcome to It's a Miracle. We're here at the Stanford Ronald McDonald House in Palo Alto, California. Every year, hundreds of thousands of families are given a place to stay at homes like this one as they face the biggest challenge of their lives, a child battling a life-threatening illness. But it's during trying times like these that miracles can happen. We begin with a little girl who had a simple dream to play baseball. But it would take a series of miracles and Ronald McDonald House charities to make that dream come true. Like most young couples, Jennifer and Jesse Gunder were thrilled by the birth of their first child, Lauren. Jess and I were just overjoyed at having this baby. She was just a doll. What's he doing? Yes, a pretty girl. But their joy of parenthood was about to turn to worry and despair. We took her to one of her normal doctor's visits, and the doctor felt that her color wasn't quite right, so she had some blood work done. And the test turned out to be not good. And we knew there was something that must be very wrong. The Gunders were told that Lauren could suffer from a form of cancer, or in the worst case scenario, a condition called osteopetrosis, a rare and potentially fatal bone disease. I have the x-ray result, and it does show that Lauren has osteopetrosis. Lauren's condition was especially severe. Her bones were developing abnormally, growing thick and brittle, eventually causing disfigurement and other serious complications. We were pretty much told that there was no cure. It would cause her to go blind, uh, most likely deaf. We're going to make her life the best we can. Her chances of survival were almost nothing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There's no way to put in words what a parent feels when they get those, that kind of news. You know, you've been given this gift, and she's a beautiful child, and they're telling you that she's not gonna make it to that first birthday that you're having in your mind, so. It was hard, it was very hard. Lauren's only hope was to find a compatible bone marrow donor. Her bone marrow was matched against everybody in the registry. Unfortunately, we never found a match. Well, that's encouraging. But in the meantime, my brother was also doing research and found a doctor in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at Wake Forest University who was doing research specifically on osteopetrosis. Dr. Lyndon Key was one of the few researchers in the world concentrating on Lauren's rare condition, but even he didn't hold out much hope for her recovery. In this severe congenital form, such as Lauren has, there's a, a greater than 95% mortality before the age of two in this, in this patient population. Still, he had had some success with a cutting edge medication, Rocaltrol. It was the ray of hope the Gunders had been praying for. We were very happy to find out that there was something that we could use to start to treat the condition. We felt a little setback when we found out that this might take years before we saw any improvement. But we felt better knowing that we were doing something. Yeah, what's Danny doing? Is he doing it too? He doing it? The ray of hope grew brighter as the progression of Lauren's disease was brought under control. And in many ways, Lauren began to develop and grow like any normal child her age. But Lauren's life was still far from normal. Her bones were brittle and broke easily. Lauren, you're making me nervous. So we had to worry about her falling and fracturing, but she was so determined, we kind of just made adjustments to have everybody play without her getting hurt. A difficult situation, considering that Lauren loved sports, especially baseball. I probably was about three or four. My friend Amanda started playing t-ball and softball, and I always wondered, why is baseball so popular? And there's a drive to right field. To find out, Lauren started listening to Atlanta Braves games on the radio and, in the process, became an avid fan. Jordan having a good night. Oh, and there's a drive to deep left field. It's out of here. Yeah! Brian Jordan. And I decided that one day I wanted to play baseball. But Lauren's dream of playing baseball wasn't going to be an easy one to fulfill. 
she had come home wanting to be on every team that existed at her school with all the flyers and things. Tryouts today. Can I play? No, honey, you can't. You know it's too dangerous for you. I know, honey, but it's just not going to work out. I felt a little mad because I always wonder why me. Why did it have to be me that got picked out of the hat to, to get osteoporosis? And why can't I be a regular kid? Even though her condition kept Lauren off the playing field, it couldn't stop her from watching every game and cheering her friends on to victory. What she wanted more than anything was to be able to play in the way she saw her friends play. Hi, Rita. Hi, Lauren. Nice catch. It frustrates me and makes me mad, but nothing I can do about it, so might as well just go with the flow. And the flow was about to change direction. It sounds great. In 1999, a friend of mine saw some kids dressed in uniforms and wheelchairs and walkers going to one of the fields. And so she asked around and found out that they were just forming this league called the Miracle League. And so she called me and said, this is right up Lauren's alley. You have to sign her up. Hey, Lauren, I've got something. I'm Though sure. still fearful for their daughter's safety, Jennifer and Jesse knew they owed Lauren a shot at making her dream come true kids who are in wheelchairs or walkers who can't see, that type of thing. And they're real teams that get to play baseball. Does that mean I could play? I think so. Yay! <laughs> the Miracle League, formed in 1998, brought the game of baseball to disabled children. For Lauren, it was a dream come true. Good hit, Lauren! For her parents, it was another challenge. I was so fearful of Lauren being out there and getting hurt, somebody running into her. And so I was really terrified. I was ready to run out in the field and take her back if the slightest thing made me uncomfortable. But at the same time, she was so determined. I mean, you would have thought she was playing for the World Series. She was so happy that we couldn't take her away from it. She said it, the risk was worth it, and so we kind of had to let her live that out. She had found her place. But the risks did not escape the attention of a man named Dean Alfred. The traditional baseball field was really an obstacle for many of these children. First base becomes a place, if you're not careful, you can actually turn over a wheelchair. Or some of the motorized wheelchairs were actually getting stuck between first and second base. It was taking two or three grown men to pull them out of uh, the sand. Well, I remember being very moved. And I remember leaving that day saying that we got to do something more. So in the spring of 1999, we launched the campaign to build the first of its kind baseball complex that would allow children the ability to enjoy the game at its fullest. Some of our kids who are in wheelchairs. And so Dean, a Rotary Club member, enlisted the help of his chapter to design a level and safe playing field. The special field that we've been talking about all along. One that the more than 50,000 disabled children in the Atlanta area could use without fear of falling or serious physical injury. But even after all the obstacles had been removed for the children, there was still a huge obstacle for the Rotary Club, a $500,000 price tag. We began to knock on doors, and one of the local Rotarians here in our community opened the door with us at the Ronald McDonald's House Charities. And I went and made a presentation to them. And they said, we got some good news and some bad news, and the bad news is you did not get $250,000. And I said, well, then you've got to tell me what the good news is. And they said, well, the good news, you're going to get $350,000. Well, right then and there, I'll always remember, I knew then the project would be a reality. Dean, on behalf of Atlanta Ronald McDonald House Paul Charities. Messer of the Ronald McDonald House Charities presented a check allowing the work on the Miracle Field to begin. I appreciate that. Our mission statement is to make a better tomorrow for children and their families. How could we fulfill our dream any better than a dream of this type? We broke ground in October of 1999 and opened the field on April the 16th, 2000. And I remember being very grateful that I wore sunglasses that day because under those sunglasses, tears were flowing pretty heavily. I've been part of the McDonald's family for 33 plus years. And this is the first time I've ever seen Ronald McDonald cry. 
McMiracle Field touched the lives of children longing for a chance to play baseball like normal kids their age. For Lauren Gunder, it was a miracle she could never have imagined. As soon as I get on that field, it's like all my worries are just wiped away and all my frustrations just disappear. It's like that field can perform a magic trick. Lauren is a very, very special child. She's got the heart of a lion. And if you could put that heart in most athletes, they would play basketball like Michael Jordan, and they'd hit home runs like McGuire. It's just a heart that's hard to describe. On a face that is sweet as an angel. She's just a very special young lady. Every time she's out there and really seriously playing ball and, and waiting for that pitcher, you're reminded that we weren't supposed to be here. This was not what we were originally told was going to be our life. So it's hard to put in words what kind of feelings you have when you experience a miracle. We went from despair to little successes becoming bigger successes and it shows me that anything's possible that makes me feel good to know that there are only a few things that make me different from a regular 11 year old i can play just like any other kid and it's just modified a little bit Woo!